What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender beginner tutorial for you. So in the last video we talked a little bit about edit mode and how you can use that to create different objects inside of Blender. In today's video I wanted to talk you through a simple way to create your first model inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first things first, um, when you model something in Blender um, there's usually not a right or wrong way as much as there's ways that you can model things that have certain benefits and there's other ways that you can model things that have other benefits so sometimes you just want to you know bang something out really fast um, so you make it really simple other times you get more in-depth there's a lot of different ways to create things inside of blender um, you're gonna find as you model that um, the, everything that you create is going to um, you're gonna find your own way to create things and so you can go about things in different ways and so I wanted to show you one way that we could create a simple table model inside of Blender. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out my default model for right now and I'm going to start by adding a cube. So I'm just going to do a shift A. I'm going to add a cube right here. I'll go ahead and turn my screencast keys on. So you should be able to see the buttons that I'm pressing over here. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is if you look at our cube, what's going to happen is it gives us a size, right? So this cube right now is 24 inches by 24 inches on all of these different sides. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to start, we'll go ahead and hit or hit the enter key um, for that to be okay. And then I'm going to tap the N key right here and click on the button for item. And so again, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. If you wanted to, you could use the scale tool to scale this down. So you could tap the S key and then like Z to scale on the Z axis if you wanted to in order to make this flatter. So you can see how you can definitely do that. For me, um, because I have this item selected under the item settings over here, you can see how one thing we get in here is we get a set of dimensions. And so you have the X, Y, and Z dimensions. So the X and Y are going to be the dimensions along the red and green axes. And then the Z dimension is going to be the thickness. So for example, if we were to come in here and say that we wanted this to be instead of 24 inches thick, let's say our table was going to be an inch thick. I could just type in a value of one right here and hit the enter key. So what that's done is that's taken our table and it's made it so that it's an inch thick on the Z axis. Well now, I'm going to do the same thing, but with feet on my X and Y axis. For right now, we're going to set the dimensions of our table. Well, I'm assuming this is going to be a square table just due to the way that we're creating this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is going to be six feet. I'm going to hit the tab key and I'm going to type in a value of six feet on my Y as well. So now this is a six foot by six foot table that's one inch thick. Notice that we did all of this inside of object mode. We haven't gone into edit mode just yet. And so now what we want to do is we want to go into edit mode. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit the tab key. So when I hit the tab key, remember that takes us into edit mode where I can actually edit the different vertices and other things assigned to this object, uh, the different edges, the faces, all of that. And so what we're going to do in this video is when you're 3D modeling something, a lot of the time what you want to do is you want to reduce the amount of modeling that you have to do as much as possible. So in this situation, for example, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use symmetry to our advantage. And so if you remember, symmetry means that something is symmetrical across two different points, meaning it's going to be the same on one side of a dividing line as it is the other side. And so a table is a great example of that because what you're going to have is you're going to have one table leg over here one over here, right? So if you model it over here, you want the exact same thing on the other side right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna split our object up and then we're gonna use what's known as a modifier in order to mirror this along an axis so that we only have to model things once instead of four times. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by adding what's known as a loop cut. And so a loop cut is basically a cut across an object that goes all the way around it. So it makes a loop, right? So right now, this is made up of one big face. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna split this along this face. And so you could either come over here and click on the button for loop cut, or usually what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the control key, or we're gonna hold the control key and we're gonna hit R. 
And so notice how when I do a control R, what I get is if I move my mouse over these edges, I get this little yellow line right here or this set of yellow lines. So that's basically an indicator of where my object would be cut along here if I was to add a loop cut. So in this case, we wanna cut this this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click. And then you can see how I can move my mouse around like this in order to place that loop cut. I'm going to right click right here in order to place that loop cut along the middle here. And so we wanna do that one more time in the other direction. So I'm gonna do a control R. I'm gonna mouse over my center point and left click. And then I'm gonna right click in order to place this. And so what we've done is we've basically split this up into different faces. And notice how this loop goes all the way around this object. So what we've done is we've split this up basically into four parts. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna come in here and I wanna delete out the vertices for all of these different parts and pieces and leave just this object right here. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna tap one to go into vertex editing mode and I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna hit the X key to delete this and I'm gonna click on vertices. And so I'm just gonna go through and I'm just gonna select the vertices along here and I'm just going to delete the vertices. Just like this. And so what we've done is now we have a quarter of the object that we had in here before. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna add what's known as a modifier. So what a modifier does is a modifier basically modifies geometry inside of your model. So in this situation, for example, I wanna click on modifier and under add modifier, I wanna click on the option for mirror. And so when I click on the option for mirror, what you're gonna notice is it's basically taking this object right here and it's mirroring it along the axis that we have selected. And it's mirroring it along the object's X axis right here. Well, what I wanna do is not only do I wanna mirror this along the X axis, I also wanna click right here to mirror it along the Y axis. And so you can see how what that do did is that mirrors this this way, but then it also mirrors that across this axis right here. And what this does is now, if I was to make a change, so let's say I was to select this vertex right here and move it up, you can see how this is gonna move up on the other corners as well. And the reason for that is because it's taking our object, which is our quarter of our table, and it's mirroring it along these two axes. And so whatever change I make inside of this object is going to be mirrored across the axes. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna add our table leg. And there's a few different ways to do that. Um, but what we wanna do in this situation is I'm just going to add a cube inside of edit mode. So I'm just gonna do a shift A, and I'm gonna add a cube right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and scale that down and you can basically type in a real world size for this. So in this situation, for example, I'm gonna assume this is gonna start off as at four inches by four inches. Now, I'm gonna move this by tapping the G key and then tapping the X key in order to move this along the red axis. So notice what this is doing is this is moving this only along the red axis right here. So I'm gonna move this out, and then I'm gonna tap the G key again, and I'm gonna tap Y to lock this to the Y axis. And so notice what this is doing is this is locking this to the Y axis so I can move it outward. And the really cool thing about this is if you look at it, we're only having to model this leg once, and the mirror modifier is mirroring that along these axes so that we don't have to model them again. And one thing that I usually do when I'm doing this is I enter the front on view like this, and I tap the G key and I move it down. And so what I'm doing is I'm basically um, using these straight on views to make sure things are aligned the way that I want them to be. So notice how you can use this in order to align these objects however you want them to be aligned. And so then you can move yourself back into this view right here in order to continue editing. And so what we've done up to this point is we've added an object and we've put it in place. Well, what I wanna do is I want to select this face by tapping the three key to enter face select mode. I'm just gonna move it down just by tapping the G key and then tapping the Z key in order to lock this to that axis. And so what I'm gonna do is the first time I just selected the face and I moved it, 
in order to make the top part of my leg. Well, what I want to do now is instead of moving it, I want to create a new piece of geometry moving down like this. And so the way that we can do that is by activating the extrude tool. So you can activate the extrude tool by tapping the E key and moving your mouse down. And so in this case, I'm going to move my mouse down a little bit, then I'm going to click. So what you're going to notice is you get this little window that pops up over here that allows you to adjust the last tool that you had active. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in a value of 36 inches and hit the enter key. And so what that did is instead of that first move that I made, it overrode it and said that we wanted to extrude this down by 36 inches. And so it went ahead and did that. Well, now what I want to do, because right now this table looks very simple and very boring, well, all I want to do is I just want to add a little bit of taper to my legs. And so the way that I'm going to do that is you can see how I have this end face selected. Well, I'm just going to tap the S key and make sure to move your mouse off to the side like this. I'm just going to tap the S key. I'm just going to move my mouse in. And notice how what we're doing is we're basically moving this in so that we get a natural taper along our table just like this. And so this is a very simple table model. One other thing that I'm going to do in this situation is most tables have pieces of wood that run across like this. So I'm going to add those really quick. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to select this face and I'm going to use what's known as the inset tool. And so the inset tool allows me to take the edges of an object like this. I can tap the I key and then I can move my mouse and it's going to inset this in. So you can see how what that's allowing me to do is that's allowing me to inset this in so that I can create this piece that runs across here using the extrude tool. And so we can go ahead and set the thickness over here as well if you want to be more precise. I'm not really worried about that for right now. But one thing I want to do is I want to use the same tool that we use to extrude this leg down to extrude this geometry across. So I'm going to tap the E key to extrude this. And notice how this naturally extrudes my object across. And you can see how because those other objects are being mirrored, um, I'm getting the same effect on the other side. But I have a little bit of a problem here in the sense that if I extrude this across and then I look at my geometry, so if I hold the Z key and go into wireframe mode, this is creating extra geometry because these objects are overlapping. And so I'm going to undo this for a second. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use another setting inside of the modifier known as clipping. And so what clipping means is clipping means if I transform this across this way, and I check this box and I extrude this, you can see how it's not gonna let that edge run over the other edge. So what that means is that means that instead of creating that extra face, like I did before, this is going to stop this when it runs into a face. And so what that means is that means I get a perfect piece of geometry right here. And if I look at it in wireframe mode, I'm not getting that extra face over here and the extra face over here with the overlap. So we're going to do the same thing over here where I'm just going to tap the I key to inset this. And we're just going to inset these edges in a little bit. I think that other one was at like 0.43 or something like that. Um, again, you can pay more attention to those dimensions and be more precise if you'd like to. But I'm going to go ahead and tap the E key and extrude this across in the same way. You can see how I still have that clipping turned on. So now what I have is I have a table model. So this table model is now in here as 3D geometry. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tab key in order to go back into object mode. You can see how I have the table in here. And so one thing I wanna talk about real quick is just applying the modifier versus not. And so notice how right now on this side, I have this modifier set, right? And so what that means is that means this acts like a full object, but really I can only, um, I can really only edit this one right here um, if I want to edit the actual geometry. And so one thing you could do if you wanted to is you could click on the button to apply the modifier. And so what this will do is if you apply the modifier like this, and that's right, I need to go into object mode, so I'm going to hit the tab key. But if I click on apply and then tab back into this, notice what this did is this applied that modifier, so it removed the mirror and it made this my final geometry. So now, these objects are in here as individual objects. And so there are pluses and minuses to that. So on the plus side, that gives me a lot more like UV mapping options and things that we can do in order to create our materials. But it also means that now if I wanna make a change, these are no longer linked, right? So if I was to select this face, scale this out, 
like this, notice how the other legs aren't moving anymore. So I'm gonna do a control Z and undo to before this modifier was applied. So now that modifier is back in here, we will talk in the next video a little bit more about applying materials to this. And so for me, I would say if you are done with this table. So if you are done with this and you're not planning on making any more changes, you're done, you're ready to UV map it and start applying materials to it, you can go ahead and click on the apply button. If you're not quite ready for that and you're gonna make some changes, you may leave this here, but you might run into some issues with your materials. Um, and I will talk in the next video about applying materials to this table object. Um, so I do wanna talk about that, but I wanna get into it a little bit more in depth. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. In the next video, we're gonna to talk a little bit more about adding materials to this table and how we can set that up so the materials look realistic and also uniform in your object. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this series. If you have any questions, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.